Welcome to Radical Ideas. I'm Joe Serrero, and with me today is Shelley Alford. Hi. And Mary Weibel. Hello. Radical Ideas is a uh, program that highlights everything that we're doing in project based learning with our emphasis in math. We're really excited today to uh, bring to you some of the professional developments that we have been doing. Teachers know already that project based math and project based learning goes through that lens of kids not really even knowing that they're participating in the learning process. They can get to the end of the day when they're doing a project-based math unit and all of a sudden go, hey, we didn't do math today, but they actually got a very deep understanding. Yeah, exactly. Uh, recently, we did um, a session called Ramp It Up on one of our Saturdays. Uh, Mary, would you like to set that up for us? Absolutely. Well, uh, very recently, as Joe said, uh, we had several teachers come in on a Saturday and we brought in some of the resources we have uh, through project-based math for them to get a chance to put their hands on it, explore and investigate some of the science that, uh, that the, the materials had to offer, and also to discover how math lives in that science. Um, so I think we're ready to watch the video. What we have now is some clips from our Ramp It Up PD that we did uh, that Mary had already previously set up. Uh, this is one that uh, we did on our Saturday uh, with, the, with the team. We're going to let you guys investigate just for a little bit the shoots, balls, and bases. How do you construct them? Look, look at all the different ways you can hand, you know, maneuver them, build with them, and whatever. Do a little free investigation, and while you're doing that, um, you know, just be thinking, because eventually I'll ask you to call out answers, what math and science concepts are we uh, modeling, or could we be modeling and experimenting with, with these manipulatives, okay, with these shoots, balls, and bases. So we'll need you to work in a group of three and a group of four, and then once you have your group, you're going to come up and get the equipment. We can set one group up in this front corner and one group in the back corner there. Exactly. So you can check the distance of one. I wonder if we adjust the angle. All righty, shall we shift over and think about some math that we were applying even if it wasn't the main idea that was coming to us. I think sometimes math is the way we communicate science mm -hmm. uh, and the way we um, quantitate, I guess is that the right word, quantitate science. We're putting the science to where someone else can replicate it or um, prove that what we found was correct. So we'll need to have that measurement somehow. Alrighty, and we can revisit this after we do a little exploration, see if we want to add anything else to the Padlet. So at this point, we are going to uh, do a more directed interaction with the shoots, balls, and bases. Um, and we're right now using it where we're using just one ramp, uh, one base, I'm sorry. And our driving question is going to be, at what, height, at what height will optimize the distance, you're welcome, that a ball travels without being dangerous? So we're thinking of if the ball jumps, like when it hits the end of the ramp, that's considered dangerous, you know, and you can say, well, it just jumped a little or jumped a lot. You decide. <laughs> you decide how much of a blip is dangerous. Um, just an idea, if you're going to do something like this with your class, you could probably find some of the videos on YouTube where you've got the water slides. There was a big one this summer, some like the largest water slide in America or something, and uh, it was big to do when they released it and when um, it showed their, their revision of the slide and how they adjusted because when uh, in their initial building, when the tube or whatever got to the bottom, it would jump. And it would jump the track. So, like, okay, we need to adjust this somehow. So, um, 
that's actually one of the follow-up questions later towards the bottom. How can we adjust this if it is jumping? We want this kind of distance. So our driving question is what height will optimize the distance the ball travels without being dangerous? So you're pretty much varying the base and it's just the single base and we're assuming it's a straight path. Um, as you're working together uh, before you get started, think about with your group how will you record your data and display your data? Because a lot of what we do is data-based. And this is where the math is going to come in, is the recording and displaying of the data and interpreting some of the data that you gather. So you have these lovely markers and marker boards, so you can record them on here. And there's a graph if you want to dry, uh, build a graph for it, that's okay. Uh, so uh, when you get over there and you start talking, think about how will I record it, how will I display it on the board. If you prefer chart paper, we have that too. So <laughs> we have everything you need here today. While you're doing your exploration, um, and we'll be coming around and interacting with you, be um, thinking about what am I saying, what does this mean? So if this is what's happening, what is that telling me and what does that mean? Um, how you, will you determine the independent and dependent variables? I'm glad, uh, Kristen, that you brought up the concept of variables. This is such an important one. Uh, what is it that's changing in this situation and what isn't? I think one of the first, I'm sorry I didn't get over to interact with your group. I'll do that next time though. But one of the first things we noticed over here, I heard the observation was that the shoots were all the same texture. So right there, you were finding a controlled variable, right? I don't know how much we talk about that in, in elementary school or, or um, I know it comes up in the sciences. So another way to think of independent and dependent is the independent is what's causing a change. The dependent is what's being changed. So as you're looking at your it, um, experience here when you're, when you're involved with the shoots, balls, and bases, and you're varying um, things, think about what is it that's being changed and what is the thing that's making the change. Um, that's your independent and dependent. They hear that a lot as they get into the upper grades, but I'm not sure if that's how they phrase it in the, in the lower grades. You might think of it as almost like cause and effect in the lower grades, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, think about if you're going to make a graph, how will you decide? Look for patterns, if there's any patterns in the data once you get it. And how might you state that pattern to someone? How is it related to the table or the graph and what you observed? And then at the end, we'll ask for you to create a response to that question. What did you find to be the maximum height you could get? And for our more inquisitive people, if we have a little more time, extend it and think what could we change, what other variables could we change in this experience in order to allow for a higher shoot but not be dangerous. Kind of like the water slide people had to adjust something in order to keep that maximum height and to keep it safe. So they had to make an adjustment somewhere but they didn't adjust the height. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Are there questions about what we'll be doing with this guided inquiry here? This one's a little more directed, but there's still, it's still informal. So go ahead with your group and um, you can decide if you want to use the marker boards to record your work and answers. Today was the first session of the Ramp It Up problem-based math. Um, today we got to play with 
ball shoots and bases where we got to make uh, inclined ramps to figure out um, you know, how we could apply math and science into our classrooms. Uh, I think the big thing that I got from this was how I could, uh, the big picture, how to think about it as the big picture, how I could use this in the real world. Um, I didn't even realize that I could, you know, where this could be applied to the real world and through the collaboration with everybody here and uh, really getting, digging deep into it, we just learned a lot of the things to in integrate the science with math and make it real world. Well, we took this one off already, so we've eliminated one. What is it that you're you're keeping constant so that you can see what's a cause and effect? So this is what's going to be constant after we get the the height. The right. <laughs> okay, so the next the next step, because we want you to be able to leave with something. Okay, this one is a little more um, conversationally. Okay, uh, coming up with misconceptions that need to be cleared up before you start the project. What would be some misconceptions that your children will bring that can hinder the completion or success of a project like this? That there's a right answer. That there's a right answer. Okay, so is that a one-time teaching or is that a year-long teaching? That's a year -long. Yeah, that, that's a year-long. Okay, so, so... I'm sorry? There's only one way to set up that ramp. The misconception is... Okay, so how do, we, how do we make sure, and especially when we get back with our teams and we're saying, hey, we want to do this with you, how do we make sure that's something that we don't have as a problem? Model, model, how, you model how you want it. Model how you want it? That gets some of them thinking this is the way you're doing it is how I need to do it. Okay, so now let me give you an example. If Joe and Mary and I had had the boxes laid out and set up, would it have been the same thing as you guys unpacking it and doing what you did? No. Why? Because they would have thought we could change them and that's how it was supposed to be. Okay, because when we model, although we, we do need to model, sometimes we need to let that exploration piece be the model and guide them through those pieces that way. What, what would be another misconception that they may have? Okay, so far we've come up with that the, they have to have the right answer and that there's only one way, and, and we know that's, that's not it. Okay, what, what is something else that might be a misconception? Lower. <laughs> the higher the tower, the further it goes? Most of them are going to build it as high as they can first. Okay, now is that what happened here though? Yes, we did. You did, but they didn't. No. That, and it was, so, it was yeah. so interesting the different method that was taken by both groups. Now here's what we get to do next. You get to follow directions for how you're going to do it. And there's two reasons for this. One, just to see the difference between that free exploration, which I know you know, and being able to um, follow those step by steps. You, you can only use two of the large okay, base. bases and you can use two of the shoots and two balls at the same time. No matter which you that's, that's up to you, okay? But you're going to see which side can get the ball to go the furthest by how you set that up. Two bases, two shoots, and two balls. But it must be the big bases. Two big bases. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Can we erase this? Can you erase that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, and what we're going to do, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do this as a setup thing. Okay, the, the difference between us, because you can do these things too where it's totally guided for purposes. And that's why we want to do this now. Okay, so two bases, two wide two big bases, two tubes, and two balls. And you have to put both balls at the same time okay. to see if that changes anything. Can we time two balls to be on the same shoot at the shoot? same time? So we can drop one, wait a second, drop the second one, or do we have to drop them at the same time? Two balls. She's not <laughs> no, now, now, why, why, why would I be doing this? What, what is the reason I'm doing this? 
Do what questions see? are coming up? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Th these are the things that we have to think about when we're putting these units together because this is when, like when I'm doing this, it, I pull my hair out going, I didn't think of that. Okay, but yes. So that, those are good questions. Do you have to put both balls at exactly the same time? Do you drop one and then the other? Some, whoever goes the furthest gets the first door prize. Is that okay? Okay, Wh whichever team goes the furthest gets to choose the first door prize. Okay? The furthest, not the fastest. The furthest, not the fastest. Why would that be different? Why would, why would that be different? Wouldn't the fastest go the furthest? No. Why not? Uh huh. And we have a lot of variables in this room. So you get to choose where you do it, and you guys have to collaborate on what would be the best way. Do they start there and you start here? Do you start together? Do you, how do you want to do it? But now these two teams have to collaborate because it's been very. You guys do your thing, they do their thing. Now you're working together to see what you need to do with it. So, have at it. Okay, so that's something that needs to be brought to the group. Right, so we don't have to have identical ramps. I'm thinking, okay. Not. What's the, if they're identical, they're going to virtually go the same distance. Well, that's what I thought you yeah. have to kind of also lose some of the Lose speed yeah. pick up speed. Uh -huh. I just attended my first project-based math session, and it was very interesting. We learned to incorporate science and math and try to figure out how we can put it in our classroom through, I would use it as a project as incorporating distance for measurement and setting up proportions. And welcome back to Radical Ideas. Um, that ramp it up, that seemed like a full day. Can you kind of expound a little bit more about it, Mary? Absolutely, Joe. Well, our day started out with the teachers actually doing a free investigation of the shoots, balls, and bases. Uh, most classroom teachers know that anytime you put manipulatives in the hands of students, they need that time to explore and play a little. Two objectives there. Number one, reduce the playtime later when you're wanting them to learn. But number two, get them thinking and asking questions and wondering, what if this and what if that? So that's where we started with our teachers, um, is just giving them a chance to do some hands-on investigation. Once we did that, we then made it more structured and guided their investigations and inquiries uh, in such ways as, uh, first, vary the height of the ramp and see how that impacts the distance the ball travels. Or say we have two ramps and the balls go together. Make some observations there. Now the way this connected with the math was that as they were doing these experiments, they had to take measurement, they had to figure out how to organize the data, uh, they had to maybe uh, display the data in a graph. You see some of the teachers referring to their graphs. Some of them you may even notice looking for patterns in the tables and then predicting. So there was all kinds of math going on that I don't know that they even knew were, was in that kind of hands-on activity. Uh, once we did those guided investigations, we pulled the teachers back and then had them uh, look at their standards, their uh, curriculum, science and math, and find the science and math that they had just experienced with shoots, spaces, and, and balls, and, um, and figure out, wow, look at all of these different objectives I just covered. Because every classroom teacher will tell you, time is the most precious resource. And it is so hard to want to invest a day and a half of instruction if you're not going to get a big bang for your buck or a big payoff. Mm -hmm. So by investigating their curriculum and finding all the objectives that that one activity addressed, they really saw the value and therefore would, I believe, be more willing to invest that time and preparation in that kind of hands-on project with their students. Uh, we wrapped up the day with a chance for the teachers to problem solve. 
uh, we ask them, come up with obstacles to doing this in your classroom. And then come up and problem solve ways to, to address those obstacles. Because we really want our teachers to feel empowered in um, putting these projects in place in their classroom. So I think that was a super way for us to put closure on it. And um, instead of going out saying, well, that was great, but uh, they went out with saying, that was great. Yes, there's some obstacles, but I have a plan to overcome it. So what a super morning we had. Absolutely. Not to mention, it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and that's part of the aspects of the uh, PBM is that uh, students, just, just like the teachers, were so involved having fun with it, but learning math. What would you say was the main takeaway from the, our Ramp It Up Saturday? Well, I think there were a lot of takeaways, but I, I really think that uh, the teachers began to understand that these hands-on investigations and the projects of project-based math really are worthwhile and they're not that hard to find if you just kind of open your mind and play a little with with what's out there. Yes. <laughs> well, as they said, you know, it's a lot of work, but they really really left with a lot out of it. Exactly. And we have many more professional developments coming up real soon. Also, if you're interested in the manipulatives or if you want to borrow any materials, we have something known as the, the cage. cage. <laughs> and inside there, we house a lot of materials that can deepen content, allow your kids to have the manipulatives to work with, and you can keep it until maybe somebody else needs it. Thank you so much for joining us for Radical Ideas as we highlighted the different professional developments that we have and to talk to you a little bit about project-based math. Please tune in next time for our next episode of Radical Ideas. Thank you.